Hey guys, thanks for coming back once again to uh, my NFL coverage. And today we're going to be covering the NFC West. Uh, of course, I'm sure you've noticed, if you're a football fan, i got a Browns hat on. I uh, don't think I'm going to be, uh, you know, heart sung to the Browns and picking them to win the Super Bowl. It's not going to happen. Uh, I'm a football fan first. I want to make sure you guys know that. I'm one of those guys that like many of you, men and women, kids, young, old, doesn't matter. You get up in the morning, you have your coffee, your tea, your soda, whatever you got to do to get your kick, your pick-me-up, and then boom, I'm sitting there scanning NFL.com, scanning ESPN.com, riding my way to work, listening to Sirius XM, NFL, seeing if I've missed anything that's happened overnight. Um, can't get enough of it. Super Bowl's done. Guess what? We got combine coming up. Guess what? We got pro days. We got the draft. We got mini camps. Uh, it doesn't stop. There really is no offseason in the NFL. That's what I love about it. Um, free agency trades, all these things, makes the sport what it is today. Keeps it interesting. Um, can't get enough. Won't get enough. And, you know, you can just ask my, my kids, my wife. Sunday, I'm the guy that's sitting there watching every game thanks to NFL Sunday ticket as well. It just sounds like I got paid for a lot of promos and I didn't. It's a bummer. But if you want to pay me, go ahead. Um, first off, we're going to do it just how we did with the last one. Um, I'm going to start with who I think is going to finish last. And we're going to start off, just get right to it, Arizona Cardinals. I think you're finishing fourth in the NFC West again this year. You brought in Bruce Arians as your head coach. Great move for that. Um, absolutely love that move. What I don't like. You brought in uh, Beanie Wells. Or you, you dropped Beanie Wells. Okay, fine. He, he's a health issue, issue and everything else. Um, I do like the fact you brought in Mendenhall from Pitt. He, uh, he was in a type of situation where he just wasn't happy playing. And uh, I, I think a, a new space for him, a new place for him, is, is going to really help resurrect his career. Uh, I look to see Mendenhall do a lot of good things. And I think he could help uh, Arizona surprise some teams, actually, this year. What I don't like is Carson Palmer coming in. And, yeah, you only gave up a six-round pick this year and a conditional 2014 pick. But you're giving them $20 million over the next two years. And, to me, that's starting quarterback pay. I don't think Palmer's a starting quarterback. I don't think he was as soon as he stayed on at the house and decided he wasn't going to play for Cincinnati. Um, Cincinnati, I had a feeling, knows, knew it. They got rid of him for an absolute steal. And Oakland found out. Oakland lost. It hasn't even been a full year since that trade, and now Oakland's given him up for a six-round pick and a 2014 conditional pick. That tells me, sorry, he's lost his edge. The person I feel the worst for about Larry Fitzgerald. This guy's one of those guys that's in and out of the locker room. He's a leader. He doesn't quit on plays, um, a la Randy Moss, who sits there and this past year say he thinks he's the greatest receiver ever. It's great to have that moxie. And just have that cockiness and brashness. And yeah, you can back it up. But guess what? Guys like Rice, guys like Chris Carter, Tim Brown, they didn't take days days off. They didn't take games off. They didn't take quarters, sessions. They didn't take one playoff. They was out there every time playing. Michael Urban out there playing. That's the type of guy I can affiliate Fitzgerald to. These guys who sit there and they'll give you 110% every play. Uh, first round pick, they're sitting there at number seven. And... Uh, with Palmer picked, I, I thought there could be a possibility that they would go ahead and uh, sneak in there and get uh, Geno Smith before the Bills did. But now I kind of see them uh, them taking uh, Lane Johnson out of Oklahoma, offensive tackle. Uh, they definitely need the, the help, the protection there as well. So they were 5-11 and last year. I don't really see them getting any better. Maybe maybe 6-10, and but I, seven games would be great for them. It, it really would. It's the type of deal that I, I feel bad, like I said, for Fitz. It's it's just one of those things, and I don't think it's going to get better for him. Uh, third, I got the uh, Rams. I love what Jeff Fisher's doing. I look back at last year's trade out of the number two spot um, that allowed Washington to get RG3, and I look at him like, okay, well, you could have had RG3, but maybe that's not the direction you want to take your team, and I can respect that. Uh, the major loss that they did have was Danny Amendola. Uh, they kind of... Kind of made up for it because Amadola, you know, he was an injury factor, everything else. And again, another situation like with Men in the Hall, maybe the guy just wasn't happy with where he was. They got uh, Titus Young off of waivers from Detroit, and I think that's big. I also think it's big that they added uh, Jake Long to the uh, as the offensive tackle. And uh, you got to have somebody to help protect uh, Bradford, maybe give him a little bit of time to uh, throw that ball around. 
Now the big thing, like I was saying, they they the trade from last year for the uh, the RG three pick. They got a slew of picks from Washington, and it really starts to pay off this year because they got the number 16, number 22 pick in the first round. And honestly, uh, Jeff Fisher, he's a defensive-minded coach. Like I said, I love what he does, and I really think he's going to take a strong safety out of Texas. Um, Kenny V, I, I can't remember the last name of it, but uh, he he just kind of fits that fits that group. And, and the big thing is with two first-round picks, I, I kind of see him come around – on number 22 and picking up uh, the, the kid out of Tennessee, Patton. Um, now, a lot of people say they could see Tavon Austin from West Virginia going to going to the Rams, but I, I just I don't see Tavon being on the board, board at 16. There's talk of him now being a, a top five – or a, not a top five, top ten pick. I mean, that's a pretty big deal right there. So I think a lot of it's going to be uh, how is it going to pan out, you know, who's going to be available. But I really say uh, Kenny V, strong safety out of Texas – is going to be there as well as uh, Patterson, the wide receiver for Tennessee at 22. So look for that to happen. Number two, and uh, this is going to be is where it gets exciting. This is this is it's too early to tell, but we're having fun with it and we're picking. And I got number two is the San Francisco 49ers. Yep, the same San Francisco 49ers that was in the Super Bowl last year. The same ones that Harbaugh is just turning into a machine. I love the 49ers. Love them. Love what they're doing. That's another team, brash, confident, just ready to go out there and get their Super Bowl. And they could do it. I'm not saying they won't. I'm not saying they can't. I love Kaepernick, uh, Kaepernick, whatever the heck his name is. Um, I had my doubts. I'll be the first to admit. I really did. I had my doubts when uh, he benched Smith and put in the, the young kid. But uh, he's, he's turned me into a believer. Look at San Francisco. Wow, key losses. The only thing I can think of that they lost over the past, you know, four or five months, two, three, four months, is um, the Super Bowl. This team hasn't lost anything. They, if anything, they've gotten better at every position, which makes it really hard for me to put them at number two. You look at the biggest thing they did. You know, uh, David Akers was a nightmare last year as a kicker and they went out and they got Phil Dawson as a kicker who was outstanding last year you know for Phil's sake again Cleveland you know Dawson spent his whole career there I hope that they do get a Super Bowl because I love Phil Dawson I'd love to see him get a ring um the other big major thing and they did they had multiple things they brought in multiple people Anquan Bolden from the Ravens for a number for a sixth round pick you know what? Right there, y'all need to go out and celebrate. If you're a San Francisco fan, go get you a Bolden jersey because uh, he's he's going to be lighting it up this year, and he's just going to be adding to an even more dangerous team this year. Plus, remember, you got Mario Manningham, who was hurt a ton last season. Um, he didn't make the playoffs. He didn't get to play in the Super Bowl. So that's another factor that, you know, this is another guy. Hey, look, San Francisco finishes first. I won't regret saying I think they could finish second because I think they can finish second or first. Uh, they're sitting there at the first round. Um, I can't remember what number pick they had, like I think 29 or 30. And I really got them getting out of the defensive tackle out of Alabama. Jesse Williams, he's strong. He's a run stopper. And when you look at the, the NFC uh, West there, uh, biggest thing I see there, you know, now they got Mendenhall, but Lynch is in the league or in that division too, and you got to have somebody who can help, you know, kind of disturb that. So hopefully they can. Hopefully that works. So finally that leaves it. I got Seahawks number one, and uh, it's not just not because Legion of Boom or or an outstanding defense or Marshawn Lynch or anything. It is a it's everything. Their key loss. Okay, yeah, they lose Leon Washington. Guess what? They bring in Percy Harvin. Now, they don't get a first-round pick this year because they had to trade that first-round pick for Percy. But you know what? That Percy Harvin is a first-round pick. He's worthy of it. I don't regret that. You know, Pete Carroll, you know what you're doing. Um, I look for you guys once again, first place. Uh, you know, if you finish second, don't worry about it. You and San Francisco both, you're in the playoffs. That's, that's just it's – a, it's a wrap. But I'm excited. You know, they, they picked up uh, – we can go over here real quick. And, of course, you know, you, you got, like I said, Percy Harvin came in there. But they also, the defense, I love what they did, bringing in a Cliff Ariel. They brought in a couple more uh, defensive-minded guys. You tackle that in with last year's rookie uh, sensation, Bruce Irving. That's going to be Sac City. And, you know, let's face it, Seattle's got the corners that you can't throw on. So, 
Uh, it's an all-around great defense. It's an all-around fun team to watch. Uh, Pete Carroll, the guy's got so much energy. He looks like a 30-year-old out there. Uh, I just, I'm excited. I'm excited to watch the NFC West. If you had told me two years ago I'd be excited to watch the NFC West, I'd probably slap you in the face. Um, but anyway, it's exciting. It's football. I'm going to be going over these several times throughout the off season. Again, there is no off season, but we're going to check back in after the draft. We're going to check back in after some mini camps. You know, there's going to be a couple trades happen, and we're just going to see what happens. But anyway, I hope y'all are enjoying what I what I got here so far and. Yeah, like I said, if you got any comments or suggestions or ideas, just put them in the comments on uh, Facebook or YouTube. Thanks.